What's going on guys? It's Tom here from Elevate Digital. And in this video, I wanna show you how to effectively write and structure a blog post for your website that isn't only gonna generate thousands of potential visitors to your site each and every month, but is also going to allow you to convert as many of those visitors into leads and sales as possible. And this is really one of the big missing keys that I see on a lot of blogs is they have great content, they often drive traffic, but they do nothing to actually convert those visitors into leads and sales. And this is one of the traps that we fell into recently. And why I wanted to um, shoot a video on this to help you guys so that you don't make the same mistake. So if you want to see more content like this, and if it's your first time to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. I'm going to be pushing out more content on a weekly basis um, from today onwards. So be sure that you're subscribed. So let's get straight into it. What I'm going to do in this video, um, this video is going to be done assuming that you have already done your key word research, you've got some ideas or you've got some topics that you know you want to write blog content about. This is just going to be about how to best structure that content in a way that's going to be optimized for SEO. Um, but again, also to convert those visitors that are coming to the blog into, into leads. So I'm going to show you um, an example of a blog here on our website that we recently updated. Um, and, you know, it was bringing in thousands of visitors every month but it wasn't bringing us any leads. And just from one small change that we did, this blog is now bringing us around three to four leads a day. So I'm just gonna show you uh, customer avatar. So this is a blog that we noticed a little while ago uh, was ranking on page one for um, customer avatar worksheet, how to create a customer avatar. Um, we were getting lots of traffic to it, but again, nobody was converting into uh, leads. So I'm going to show you how this blog is structured and why it's structured in that way from an SEO perspective. And I'm then going to show you some of the things you can do to actually increase your chances of converting these visitors into leads. So the first thing you want to do with a blog is to really um, let people know that they're in the right place ultimately, right? Because one of the things we see when we take a look behind the scenes at a lot of websites and look at the analytics is that they have very, very high bounce rates. And generally the reason for that is because people don't see something as soon as they land on the page that reassures them they are in the right place. Now there's a couple of ways you wanna do this. You wanna confirm what the blog is about, but then you also want to show some understanding that you get why people are here and that you get some of the challenges they might be going through. Let's say, for example, they're currently struggling with something. You wanna acknowledge that challenge. You wanna acknowledge that struggle. So it assures people that they are they're in the right place. And also give them that big promise, right? What are they gonna get out of reading the blog? What are they gonna get out of sticking around? Because this is one of the big things, right? It's, not, it's all well and good bringing lots of visitors to your site, but if none of them are sticking around to read the content or take that next step, then it, what's it all been for, right? So it's really important that you get this opening paragraph right. So one of the other things that can really help with um, blog content is videos to make it as engaging as possible. Some people prefer to watch video content as opposed to reading lengthy blogs. So if it is quite a long blog and you are able to do so, um, it can help to try and include a video. Now, this is one of the changes we made to this blog. Right. This is a blog about how to create a customer avatar. So what we've done is we've included a next logical step for people to take, which is downloading a customer avatar worksheet. And the distinction that I want to draw here, because this is something, you know, something that we did of our blogs and something I see a lot of people doing. They have these amazing blogs and then at the end of it, they'll go on to making an offer. Right. So like here, for example, our, our kind of main entry point offer on our website is for people to book a website review where we will go through their website, call them a 15 minute screen share and show them some practical ways to increase their traffic leads and sales. However, if I'm just going onto a website to find out about how to create a customer avatar, I don't necessarily want that. I don't wanna, you know, I'm not ready to engage at that level yet. What I do want though is a customer avatar guide. Um, or to know how to build that customer avatar. And another company that does this extremely well is HubSpot, right? Huge, huge company that's gone through phenomenal growth. One of the things you'll see they do is for every blog they have, they have what I like to call a content upgrade, right? So they have a lead magnet that is very, very relevant 
to the article that they're writing about. So for example, they did one about how to do content marketing on LinkedIn, right? You get to the end of the blog and instead of it saying, oh, sign up for a free HubSpot account today, they actually offer a checklist on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile, right? So it's very, very relevant to the actual blog they're writing. So the amount of leads they're gonna be able to generate as a result will go through the roof. And this is exactly what happened to us, right? We were generating zero leads from this blog previously. And like I say, we are now generating at least two to three leads a day that are coming through this blog from the visitors that we're getting to it. So it can make such a profound impact just to think about what is something I can offer the visitor in this instance, right? What's going to be a next logical step that they would need to take when they're reading this blog? What's really gonna help them? Now, obviously, look, if you're doing, um, you know, multiple blogs a week, I don't expect you to create a, you know, a lead magnet for each and every single blog. But if, you know, you've got a maybe a common trend in your blogs, or if there is, um, you know, let's say you've got a blog that you know is getting quite a lot of traffic, it can be well worth doing this, which is why it's really important that you're always checking your Google Analytics once a week, once a month, and just getting a picture of, um, you know, where are we getting traffic from? Even Google Search Console as well is really good at finding out like what keywords are actually driving traffic to our website. Now, the next thing you wanna think about when it comes to structuring the actual blog content itself, and what I'm actually gonna do, I'm just gonna bring this Word document over here so you guys can see. And this is normally the process that I would go through when I'm writing a blog. So what you'll wanna do initially is you'll have your um, you'll have your blog title. So let's say we were doing a blog on um, uh, how to make a Christmas cake. That's the, that's the title of our blog. That's the, the main topic. What we then wanna do is think about several subtopics that fall within this blog, right? So what are, the, what are the components that go into this? Well, maybe it's like, what ingredients do you need to make a Christmas cake? Right, so this is gonna be a subtopic. Um, how long does it take to make a Christmas cake? What are the different types of Christmas cake, right? So what you're able to do here, and again, you wanna think about what are the components that are really going to help people to understand this core message? Because one of the big things for Google and what's really gonna help you to rank is relevancy. Google want to know that the, the pages that they're ranking, the, the websites and pages that they're ranking in the, the top positions are extremely relevant to what the user is searching for. So you wanna be very, very intentional about keeping it within the core topic. So anything you think is gonna fall in and help the user get a better answer to this question is really gonna help you here because what it, you're also doing by having these subheaders is you're giving yourself the ability to rank for additional keywords, right? Because not everybody is going to just be searching for that main topic. So by having those additional things, you're giving yourself more of a chance to rank for some of these additional keywords as well. So you'll see here, like on, um, on here, for example, we've got why create a customer avatar, what to think about when creating your customer avatar. Right? So these are all other things that customers can be set for, building multiple avatars. And actually the reason that I um, added this on, this is something I put on recently, um, was because I saw that from Search Console, I was looking in Search Console again, definitely good practice to go into your Search Console, see what kind of search terms are actually driving traffic. And that can then direct you in terms of, ah, what, what additional things or what additional subtopics can I add into this main blog here to help people? And maybe, you know, if it's something that gets a lot of search volume, it might even be worth writing a separate blog on that altogether and then having links between the two. Now, another thing that you'll wanna do, which is good practice and can really help your SEO when you are going through this blog, once you've written out the subtopics, you've got the main topic, the subtopics underneath that, you've got the content in the blog, you then wanna go through and make sure there are internal and external links. 
links. Um, so you'll see here that we're linking out to some of our, our own service pages. We link to other blogs where it's relevant. And we also externally link out to other companies as well. Right. So this is another blog um, that we wrote. And up here, there's an article by Forbes uh, magazine talking about the importance of a customer avatar. And the reason you want to do this is because it helps Google to really understand the context of the blog. And it also helps to transfer some of the authority and some of the link juice between the pages on your website. So both internal links linking to other pages on your website, but also linking out to other credible sources as well. I've seen a few stats now that show that actually by linking out to high authority sources, Gov websites, or even just websites of you know very, very high domain authority, media publications, places like Forbes magazine, for example, can really help because you're borrowing some of that authority and Google like to see when you're actually linking out to other credible sources. Um, so I've seen a number of, of, of studies and, and tests that have been done now that show that can actually help with your ability to rank. Um, so there's some of the main steps I'd be going through. So just to summarize here, some of the main things you wanna do when you're creating the blog Think about the main topic, then think about what are the subtopics, list out the subtopics that come under that, have a look through it, take off any subtopics that aren't hyper relevant to that particular blog, and then start just filling in these uh, subtopics with the content, right? And then after you've got that done, go through that blog, go through that content, clean it up and do any kind of internal or external links where possible, cite to sources, think about other potential blogs that you've already got or maybe service pages or product pages on your website that you can link out to. And again, where possible, if it is a high traffic blog or if it's a blog on a, you know, a core topic, if it's a pillar piece of content for your business, think about how can I create a next logical step for that person to take, right? So as an example here, with the example of our how to make a Christmas cake blog, um, you know, a next step here might be how to decorate, you know, a, um, a checklist to decorating your Christmas cake like a pro. Right. Whatever that thing is, like really try and put yourself in the mind of this customer, whoever you're writing this blog for and think about what 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 are they what are they really trying to get out of this blog? What is it they're looking to achieve? And think about creating something that is going to be an absolute no brainer for them to sign up to and to take that next step with you. So I really, really hope that's helped. Um, if you do have any questions, I would love to engage with you guys. So be sure to drop something in the comments below. If you've got a blog you're working on at the moment or you have a blog on your website that you're looking to optimize, drop it in the comments and I will get back to you personally and give you some ideas, suggestions, feedback as to how you can not only better optimize it for SEO to drive more traffic to your website, um, but to also start generating more leads or more sales from that blog. Um, and if you do want personalized advice on your website, remember, you can head over to our website. There'll be a link in the description below where you can book onto your free website review where we'll do exactly that. We'll give you a personalized audit with some practical tips on how you can increase your traffic, leads and sales. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I will see you guys again very soon.